Hello, hello, welcome little chefs. We are going live here. So today I'm just making my dinner. We're gonna be doing shrimp fajitas with a cabbage slaw because I have a lot of leftover cabbage. I did cabbage, I used half of the head of cabbage last night and it always seems to just take up space in my fridge and I can never get through it. It's pretty packedly dense. It's pretty densely packed. So I always am left with leftover cabbage. So I'm trying to use it in the best way possible. So I'm doing shrimp fajitas with a cabbage slaw and then a pineapple salsa. And I'm trying to get a little healthier in my diet. So instead of like a traditional mayonnaise based slaw, I'm gonna make it with yogurt. Um, and Greek yogurt has seemed to be like, seemed to be my new favorite thing. So we're doing it. We're going with some Greek yogurt. Um, I have been replacing it with my sour creams and all of my mayonnaise based sauces. If you season it really well, it, it's dupe, you know? So let's go ahead and start off by doing the slaw. Why not, right? So before I start cutting up my cabbage, let me remind you that I have monthly cooking classes for $2.99. So I'm streaming on all platforms right now. I'm on YouTube and Facebook, and I'm also on Instagram right now. So you can subscribe on any one of those platforms because I do the same exact thing. I go live on all of them. So if you are on Instagram or Facebook, if you go to the top of my page and hit that subscribe button, I think on Facebook, it might even be a button like right below this live video. You hit subscribe for only $2.99. I go live just like this, but um, a, a month or excuse me, a week before all cooking classes, I send out the recipe so we can cook together on live. This is just me cooking dinner, my mind dinner, but um, it's more interactive when you subscribe. And I do them once a month, usually towards the beginning of the month around dinner time. So you can eat whatever we create for your dinner. And I usually do it for like four people so you can feed, feed a family. So Facebook and Instagram, if you go to the top of my page and hit subscribe, join the cooking class, you can cancel at any time. I have over 600 little chefs that are in this cooking club and they're still with me. So if you enjoy it, feel free to stick around. But if you just wanna test it out for the month, do that as well, only $2.99. Like that's less than a Starbucks coffee. So on Facebook, Instagram, hit that subscribe button. On YouTube, you go to the top of my page and right beside that subscribe button, it says join. So if you wanna join on YouTube, hit that join button to become part of the Little Chef Club. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna tilt this down. And we're gonna start working on our slaw for these shrimp fajitas. So I used this yesterday. And so I have the, the second half here. This right here, this core is pretty fibrous and we don't want to eat that, okay? I mean, you can, it's not like it's gonna hurt you, but we're gonna take that out. It's really dense in that area, not that great to eat. And we're gonna try to slice this as thin as possible. Hi, Cook It Erica. Everyone go follow Cook It Erica, she's the, grit. she's the best. She has a subscription program as well. All right, so I'm just slicing this really, really fast and really thin. So notice that my fingers, when I'm cutting, are like curved. So I want my fingers to be curved so I don't chop my fingers off. So this is like, it's called the claw, and this is my protection against my knife. So if I curve my fingers and use that middle finger as a guide, I'm not gonna chop my fingers off. It's almost impossible, okay? And also make sure to tuck that thumb as well. If your thumb is out here, you're gonna chop it off. All right. So again, thin slices of that cabbage. No one likes a big chunk of cabbage, right? And look how much, look at that. I mean, this tiny little cabbage head makes so much, so dense of a vegetable. I guess I'll do the whole thing. I'm gonna have cabbage for days. Wow, thank you for the 50 stars on Facebook. I appreciate that. Thank you, JJ. Hey, JJ, you're back. You were here last night. 
So I've been just going live and cooking my dinners and having a blast on here. But if you want more instructional cooking classes, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe on Facebook and Instagram. And then on YouTube, you have to do you have to do something called join or be a member. So just check the top of my page and it should say should say join or subscribe, whichever platform you're on. Hey, Ashley P in YouTube. I see you there. She's a little chef. She's part of the little chef club. You get a little badge. You get little badges on um, all the platforms. You can be like, I'm a little chef. <laughs> and it's funny, I've been, ever since this journey with social media and like doing things virtually, I've had to learn a lot about video, audio, all that jazz. And I'm still learning. Don't get me wrong. I am not a professional, but I have a cousin that is in the industry and I'm always like, um, Hey, can you help me? Or, Hey, how do I set up my lighting? Because I just don't know. And I have another friend that went to the, um, Tish program at NYU and did the filming program there. And I always am asking her, I'm like, help me. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So it's been fun. So this streaming thing on three platforms, that's like huge for me. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a techie. I know I'm semi young, but I don't know. Before I had any social media, before I did my yacht gig, just like two years ago, I had zero social media. Like I was kind of living off the grid. And then I told um, my friends and family that I'll document it. So I started my TikTok like two years ago and I had to figure out how to use social media and it went crazy and so blessed, so grateful that, that it did. I mean, this has been, these past few years has been amazing. So many new opportunities my way and I'm just so grateful. All right, cabbage is cut up. Let's go ahead and make this into a slaw. So, like I said, I'm trying to keep this healthy. I'm using some Greek yogurt. The reason why I look like a pro on camera is because I'm a teacher. <laughs> Somebody just said I look like a pro on camera. That's because I'm a teacher and I have to be a professional at this, right? Oh, and I'm a virtual teacher now too. So once, when COVID started, I moved from the classroom into a, the virtual setting. So I'm doing cooking classes on Zoom for my kiddos all the time. All right, let's get this going. Look at this sad, guys, look at this sad green onion. I'm still gonna use it because, oh, I see Anne is a subscriber in here, I think, in Instagram. Okay, so this is my sad green onion. If I put this on water, in water, it would spring right back up. Um, do you, do you, any of you guys regrow these? I know you can do green onions in water, but you can also put them right into the dirt and they'll just grow. It's crazy. Mother nature do be mother nature. -ing. All right. Where did I just put my fork? Guys, I'm going crazy here. I guess I didn't have a fork. All right. So instead of a yogurt based slaw, I am doing Greek what did I just say? Instead of a mayonnaise-based slaw, I'm doing yogurt because we're trying to be healthy little chefs in this house. No, it's the last of the Greek yogurt. Sad days. And I don't want like, I don't like heavy slaws, like the ones with a lot of mayonnaise, lot, like too creamy, uh-uh, not a fan. So I'm just doing light, light um, Greek yogurt. And if I need to supplement, I'm gonna put some olive oil in there. Olive oil is another answer to all. Um, I love olive oil. To get that slaw flavoring, we're going in with some vinegar. 
If I had red wine vinegar, I would use it, but I don't. So I'm using apple cider vinegar. That's good enough. And of course, some salt and pepper. Hi from Spain, wow. All right, salt goes in, pepper goes in. Lydia, you said you subscribed a few weeks ago, but y'all unsubscribe me the next day. I don't have the authority to do that. <laughs> so it might be on Facebook's end. You might wanna check and see. If you go to the top of the page on Facebook and hit subscriber hub, it should bring you into that page, but if not, I, I don't have the authority to kick you. And I did not do that. All right, I put in salt and pepper, in goes sugar. And the sugar is just like when we make a salad dressing, there's vinegar in salad dressing, just like there's vinegar in this, in this slaw. Vinegar is really harsh, right? So cooking is all about balancing flavors to tame down the harshness of the acid from the vinegar, we add just a touch of sweetness. And we're not necessarily making this sweet, we are just balancing the flavors. Okay, so I see that this is gonna need a little more binding. So I have some olive oil, I'm just gonna throw some olive oil. But right now it looks delish. All right, so this is just Greek yogurt. Instead of mayonnaise, it's a healthy slaw. And I'll go in and taste. And just let so you know, if I'm double dipping, don't get on my case, everybody, because guess what? This is my dinner. I'm not serving it to anybody. So if I was in a professional kitchen, I wouldn't be double dipping. All right, let's taste to see how our flavors are. Mm. I need more vinegar and salt and pepper. <clears throat> this is like big pepper. It always gets me in the back of the throat. Okay, that should be good. And remember, we don't wanna make this too sweet, okay? The sweetness, the sugar is just bouncing out the flavors. We're also gonna have sweetness coming from our pineapple salsa. And I might even throw some coconut into our little shrimps for the shrimp fajita. For the shrimp fajita. Um, I don't know what it is about me, but I like sweet add-ons onto my fish or shrimp tacos. Look at that, beautiful, healthy slaw. Does the sweet yogurt work for the flavors? I personally would not do sweet yogurt because it's super sweet. It's almost like dessert sweet. So I would just go with a plain yogurt if you have that available. And did you know that you can do, if you have an Instapot, there's a yogurt function. I've done it before and it makes like a gallon of yogurt. All you have to do is like, if I took this yogurt, put a spoonful into the milk, it will culture for like eight hours. I, I think it was like eight hours. And it made yogurt. So if you have an Instapot, check it out. Um, I think I have a video on it on TikTok. And it was so easy. And I don't have to spend money on yogurt anymore. I can just put a spoonful. And it's like the never-ending yogurt. You can just continue using a scoop of yogurt to make the next batch. It's really interesting. Okay, next thing we're going to do is our pineapple. Okay. Pineapple. All right, here's our pineapple. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, this is so intimidating. It's really not. I'm gonna teach you easy way to do this. You'll be able to crank out pineapples. You could, you could become a professional pineapple cutter, okay? Don't be intimidated. It's okay, little chef. I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna teach you the way. 
So the first thing that comes off is this crown here. And guess what? We can take this off and plant it in the ground and it will make a whole new pineapple. You might have to wait three years, but you will have a pineapple. So I'm taking this part off. Okay, and don't go too deep. Just see, see how much I did? Just like half an inch, less than a half an inch. Okay. <clears throat> then we're gonna cut off the butt. Again, don't take too much off, just like a half an inch or so. Boom, just like that. Okay, now, pineapple of uh, the SpongeBob house is destroyed, okay? So now we need to take out the outside layers. Okay, you're just kind of, you want to make sure you have a sharp knife. That's a big thing. Okay, you're just gonna go around the pineapple. Oh, let me tilt this camera down for y'all over here. Okay, just take your knife. Go around the pineapple, cut out, cut off that outer layer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. After my dinner tonight, I'm going to a hockey game. I'm excited. I love hockey. It's like my newfound favorite sport. So I grew up playing lots of sports in high school. So I never really liked watching sports. I'm like, I'd rather much, much rather be, um, oh, somebody just said use the peels for tea. I haven't done that yet, but every single time I post a video with a pineapple, everyone's like, save the peels. So you know what? I'm gonna try it out. All right. Who's playing the Pensacola Ice Flyers? And I don't know who else. That's all I know. Uh, somebody just asked, what am I making? I am making shrimp fajitas with a pineapple salsa and a, um, a slaw. All right, so now I cut this pineapple in half. Boom, okay, in half. Now I'm gonna cut it in quarters. What sports did I play? I did soccer, swimming, basketball, and golf. Golf was like my primo sport. I was very competitive in golf. I would like go to tournaments, so do the Florida Junior Tour on the weekends. Um, and then in college, I played lacrosse. So that was fun. I was very sporty. All right, so now I just take the pineapple quarters and I'm just running my knife down the center to take out the fibrous core. Okay. It's not, it's not like it's gonna hurt you, but it is pretty uh, hard to eat. Hard to chew. Let's taste how this pineapple is. Mmm. Oh, another thing that I forgot to mention, besides the cooking class, I throw in a little extra fun time. Julia is in um, my Facebook chat right now. She came to the Little Chef game night. So in addition to the $2.99 $2 cooking class each month, um, I do a Little Chef family game night. So I just bought the Jackbox games and you can just join on your phone. It's free for you. So you just join on the phone and then we all meet up and play board games together. So I usually do the cooking class beginning of the month and then <clears throat> I'll do the, I just started up the, the game night thing. So I'll start doing the game night like mid month. And the next cooking class is February 3rd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're doing a Valentine's date night. So we're doing Tuscan chicken with a creamy sun-dried tomato pasta and homemade Caesar salad. I'm so excited. 
So if you want to show off for your, your Valentine's date, join us for the cooking class. It will be a couple days before, or more like a week and a half before um, Valentine's Day. So you can work on your cooking skills and then impress your Valentine's date with a beautifully cooked meal. And like I said, it's $2.99 a month and I do monthly cooking classes. You can try it out for a month and see if you like it and then you can cancel any time. But I have over, it, rise, it rose to like 650 little chefs total um, in the little club, in our little cooking club. So over 630 little chefs are now in this cooking club. I'm so excited. And I do post the recordings. So if you can't make it to the live, if you can't make, to, make it to the live, you can just watch the recording. All right, so that's a lot of pineapple. Whoa. All right, I don't need that much pineapple. So I'm gonna set some aside. This will be for snacking later on throughout the week. It was, it's not the best pineapple. I got a pineapple a couple of weeks ago. It was a great pineapple. This one, yeah, mediocre. Am I cooking um, chicken for Valentine's Day? <laughs> no, I'm gonna get a pizza and go to the beach with some mimosas. I don't know why mimosas. No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. But I don't wanna cook, <laughs> gotta be honest. All right, so I'm only gonna use about this amount of pineapple for my pineapple salsa, cause I really don't need much. I'm just gonna break this into smaller pieces. I should have done the other way, but I'm so used to cutting pineapple that way. But I'm just doing small diced pineapple. What time do I hold the class, the cooking class? It's gonna be on the third at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So again, if you miss it, recordings will be posted. All right, little baby pieces of pineapple. I'm also gonna put in some onion because I don't want this to be just strictly a sweet salsa. I'm gonna add some onion. I'm gonna add some red pepper. And I don't know how I feel. I asked Siri, I'm like, cause I haven't really made a pineapple salsa in a while. I'm like, is there tomatoes in a pineapple salsa? It doesn't seem right to me. And she's like, yeah, there's tomatoes. I'm like, I don't believe you. I don't know if I wanna put tomatoes. It seems wrong. I think I think just onions, onions, red bell pepper, green onion, my limp green onion, and the pineapple would suffice, but I don't know. Okay. Oh, this is tedious work. Small dicing, little. I did get this. <laughs> I have this thing. When I'm on, when I'm doing my real lazy cooking days, do you like my sign? It's a complete disaster now. There's pineapple everywhere. I have this. Okay, so when I'm really lazy, I have this thing that chops up vegetables for me. It's like a container, and then there's a little grate in the container, and you like smash it on top of the grate, and it small dices everything for you. Honestly, it's wonderful. Cilantro. Somebody just said put cilantro in it. I wish. I I have parsley but I don't have cilantro. I had a garden um, at my old house. And I mean, I did everything for that garden. I, I put in a, um, a little, why am I blanking on the word? What is that? When you run water, why am I blanking? When you run water to a certain area of landscaping, irrigation. I, did, I put in irrigation to go on this lifted um, garden that I had. And I tried to do cilantro and it just never took off. 
my basil and Thai basil did really well. My rosemary was killing it, but my mint and my cilantro just dwindled away. And I don't have a green thumb like at all. So it was really, it was really sad and I don't know what I did wrong. All right, I think that's enough pineapple. Colin, it quits on the pineapple. Okay, now another thing that's going into my pineapple salsa is red onion. Let's see, get my red onion here. Hands are sticky from the pineapple. Okay, red onion, it's a fun thing to cut up. I'm gonna show you two ways to cut it. We're gonna do a julienne cut and a small dice cut. Small dice will go into the pineapple salsa and then my julienne cut will go into my shrimp fajitas. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is find the root of the onion. This little, it looks like a little ponytail, little hairy looking side, right? We're gonna cut this in half through that root. All right, so if we look at the onion, you see how it bunches up towards that root? That's what's holding the onion together. Okay, so I'm gonna cut about an eighth of an inch on the opposite side of the root. So here's the root, here's the other end. Cut the tiniest bit off, just about that much. Cilantro like sun and a drained soil. See, I wouldn't know, I was treating all my plants the same. <laughs> I think I need to take a gardening class. All right, same thing on, oh, we'll do this one. We'll do the julienne later. Okay, now we're taking off the skin. Yeah, and somebody just asked about stocks. Um, you can totally use the scraps from the onion to make a stock. Um, purple onions aren't normally used in a stock um, and it's usually like a yellow onion. I am already crying, this is not good. It's usually a yellow onion uh, or white onion. And actually the skin, somebody asked why you put the skin in the stock, it's to add color. Okay, so that like brown color uh, adds a nice tint, You should, I should say, to the stock. All right, so the onion is peeled. Now we are going to look at these natural lines on the uh, onion, okay? We're gonna follow those natural lines as we cut. We're gonna cut back towards the root, but stopping about an eighth of an inch from the root, okay? Because we wanna keep this onion still intact. We're cutting all the way down, but just stopping an eighth of an inch from the back of the onion. The smaller I make these slices together, the smaller the dice. If I do larger slices, like one, two, three, four, five, I'd have a bigger diced onion, but I want small diced onion, so I'm making small slices. And notice how I've got my claw going on. I'm not trying to cut my fingers tonight. I got a hockey game to go to. I'm not going to the emergency room, I'm going to have a hockey game. All right, now, if we turn it the other way, the opposite way, and make, make slices this way, look at that. Small dice pieces. And a lot of times you'll see somebody demonstrate this, they'll cut down the center. I've seen too many accidents that way. And the only thing that that's doing is preventing the onion from flaring. Okay, so like flaring out like that. Um, it's not going to help you with the size of the cut, like the small dice. Oh, I'm crying. Because look at this onion. It's already segmented for you. Doing a couple cuts this way is not doing anything for the size of the cut. It's just preventing fraying. So you don't need to do it if you don't feel safe doing it. All right, that is done. That's going into the pineapple salsa. here Facebook and YouTube, you can see that I am crying. <clears throat> All right, let me get a bowl for this pineapple salsa. We'll put it in there once it's done. All right, now we need some red pepper.
Let me wash this really quick. I'll be right back. Okay, to cut a bell pepper, I'm sure you've seen many ways to cut it, but I find that the easiest way is to do like a little circular cut around all these seeds. So in the center, attached to this, um, straight down will be like a sack of seeds and a white membrane. Um, the seeds are not really fun to eat and the membrane is a little bitter. So we want to take as much of that out as possible. So you're just gonna take your knife Make a small cut anywhere on the pepper and then just kind of take your knife and run it along the outside of the bell pepper. And then you're left with that little sack of seed and all of this white membrane. And if you see any white membrane on the pepper itself, you can just cut it out. If you don't have time for that, you don't need to do it, but um, it's, just, it's just a little bitter. Turning on the exhaust vent. Oh, I don't have an exhaust vent near me. I'm like at a little, I'm in a makeshift studio. <laughs> I'm at my dining room table. Cause in the kitchen, I don't have an island. Um, so it's, I can never have like a face on camera. All right, so I just kind of took my knife and cut some of this because I don't like wasting food. I will also use this as well. Don't waste, don't waste food, please. All right, now I'm going to do two different kinds of cuts with this bell pepper. I'm gonna do a small dice for my pineapple salsa and also julienne cuts for my fajitas. Okay, with my small dice. I just made some strips and I'm cutting along those strips. Again, I'll show you how to small dice. I'm making strips, little julienne cuts. And then turning the other way, making cuts this way. And you can see that I'm making, it's okay, Bernie. It's another dog, it's fine. You can see that I'm making my cuts the exact same. Pineapple looks like the onion. Onion looked like the bell pepper. Um, this is just gonna be really appealing to the eye. So it's gonna be a beautiful looking salsa. I'm gonna do a couple more pieces of the bell pepper. Yeah, I'm making shrimp fajitas with a pineapple salsa and a slaw. Okie dokie. So that's, should I put tomatoes? I need an answer. We need an answer on this. Tomatoes in the pineapple salsa or no? It just feels really wrong to me. You're, Erica, I was literally, oh, pickled jalapeno, no tomato, okay. All right, no tomato it is. Oh, we have one yes. Tomato, yes, no. Oh no, guys. I, I see more no tomatoes than yes tomatoes. So we're gonna say no. But I did forget one thing that I do wanna add into this pineapple salsa is some jalapeno. So again, this is like a bell pepper. There's a sack of seeds right in the center. If you want the spice, keep the seeds in membrane. If you want a milder pepper jalapeno or whatever pepper you're using, Keep the seeds in membrane, but um, I am, I'm not feeling spicy tonight. So I am gonna cut the membrane um, and seeds away from the pepper. All right, I'm going to cut this smaller than these because nobody wants a big chunk of jalapeno. Okay, small, small, small dicing, almost mincing the jalapeno. 
We just want it dispersed throughout the salsa. How did he get there? Straggler. Oh, and then I have my limp green onion that I want to add into something. I wanted to put it into this slaw just to add it a pop of green, but uh, I don't know, the jalapeno might be taking care of that. I'm gonna have a spicy fingers after I cut this jalapeno. Make sure not to touch your eyes after you work with jalapeno. All right, pineapple salsa is gonna go into the bowl. I'm so excited. Fish tacos, shrimp tacos is like my favorite thing ever. Uh, what knife am I, is, am I using? I'm using a kuma knife. I'm not at like my house right now, my house house. So I usually use like Wustoff or Hankel. Um, I love those brands. Wustoff's my favorite. Mm -hmm. That is gorgeous. Okay, now we need to like season this up, right? So let's do it. I'm gonna get some lime. A little lime is gonna go in. Um, I have some jalapeno, or what am I saying? I have an avocado. I'm gonna put that on top later as well. So we're just gonna do a little squeeze of lime. Yeah, somebody said, wash your hands before going to the bathroom after cutting jalapenos. Somebody did that when I was in college. All right, lime on the floor, that's cool. Pick that up later. Finally catching my live, yay, Michelle. <laughs> all right, so also into this pineapple salsa, I'm gonna add in salt. And I like to add a little bit of olive oil into my salsas. And then a little touch of sugar, because again, we added that acid and we're trying to balance it out. Also, the sugar is gonna help accentuate the pineapple flavor. Okay, give this a stir. Ooh, this is gonna look so pretty on our shrimp fajitas. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done, we just gotta cook up the shrimp. But I gotta taste this first. Wow, thank you for the stars on Facebook. Thank you so much. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, man. That's going to be delicious. Okay. Last thing we need to do, cut up our vegetables, fry up our shrimp, make our tacos. All right. For the veggies, I'm doing a red bell pepper. Orange. This is another way to cut a bell pepper if you want to know. Boom. All right, to julienne these, you're just cutting little strips. This is called a julienne cut or matchstick cuts. Okay, so I'm doing red and orange bell peppers just for the sake of being pretty, because colors, more colors are prettier. Is Abby the little chef? <laughs> I think I'm a little chef. Everyone likes to be called a little chef, right? Thank you, Michelle, for the stars. I appreciate that. 
Um, cool fun fact about bell peppers is that a green bell pepper is the least ripe. So it goes from green bell pepper and then as it ripens, it will go to yellow. It's like going back to primary school. It goes from green, as it ripens, it goes to yellow. If it ripens more, it goes to orange. If it ripens more, it goes to red. And guess what? Just like a banana, think about a banana. Oh, I got it. This, this makes me, this makes me, this is me. Okay, if you think about a banana, you know, you start at like that green color. And then as it ripens, it goes through the stages of color, goes through like the greenish yellow, then it goes to like yellow, then it goes to brown. Just like a bell pepper, it goes from green all the way through those stages, green, yellow, orange, red. The riper it is, the sweeter it's gonna be. So if you notice, if you have a red bell pepper and a green bell pepper, you taste them, red bell pepper is gonna be much sweeter because it's more ripe, just like a banana. A banana is more sweeter the riper it gets. I love food. I don't know about you, but I love food. Food's awesome. Okay, now on to julienne, julienning an onion. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. Oh man, we've been going for 40 minutes already. Thanks for sticking around if you're, <laughs> if you're really sticking around here. Okay, yeah, we're all little chefs. We're all little chefs, we're all little chefs. Let's julienne this onion because I told you I'm gonna show you how to julienne the onion. So to julienne the onion, we're cutting off the root, everybody. Cutting it off. The root is the little hairy side. We can cut off the root side and we can cut off the opposite side. Then we're gonna wanna peel it. Yeah. Uh-oh, I got the hiccups. All right, remember to hit that subscribe button. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, subscribe to Abby in the Galley. It's only $2.99. You'll get once a month cooking classes, just like this, like I'll be explaining what I'm cooking, but you cook along with me because I'll send out the recipe ahead of time and we can cook together on live and it's a blast. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook, go to the top of my page and hit subscribe. I think if you're on Facebook, you can um, just hit the subscribe button at the right, right below this live. If you're on YouTube, you gotta go to the top of my, the Abby and the Galley page and hit join. So $2.99 $2 cooking classes once a month. Next cooking class is February 3rd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're doing a Valentine's date night. So if you wanna impress your, your date, Take this cooking class and you can cook it for the for Valentine's Day. All right, I'm julienning the onion. I forgot to tell you how to do it. So again, we're following those lines, okay? But this time we're cutting all the way through, okay? Following those lines, the thinner you slice, the thinner the julienne, the thicker you cut, the thicker the julienne. Okay, just cutting slices down the onion. And when you get to this point, there's, ah, I go a little. When you get to a point where you're like, oh, that's scary. It's too, it's like too unstable. Just flip it and then work the other way. You're fine. Everything's fine, little chef. I'm crying again, everybody. <laughs> Woo. Okay. And then they'll just break right up. What if you, what if we subscribe, but we're not available for the live? Great question. If you miss the live, that is A-OK -okay because I record them and post them on whatever platform you subscribe on. So if you're on YouTube, they'll be on the page for the subscribers. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, they'll be on the page for the subscribers. So no worries if you can't make it to the live. They will be posted for you. And if you subscribe, you'll have access to that page right away. <laughs> if you subscribe, you'll have access to the page right away and the recipes posted for the next cooking class man i don't look good on camera right now i'm all red and cryy <laughs> all right so we are getting this out of the way and we're gonna go we're gonna now gonna cook our shrimp have, have my little i'm trying not to cry this little chef is sad over some onions Okay, here we go. 
Last step is our shrimp. Let me get the shrimp. Okay, shrimp, one of my favorite proteins. This is peeled and deveined shrimp. I didn't have to do it, wonderful. <clears throat> so all I'm gonna do is add in some Cajun seasoning. And this stuff, Tony's, wonderful. And it's already salt, there's already salt in it. This is like my favorite for whenever I do like blackened fish tacos or, um, <clears throat> or shrimp tacos. So I need your help on this. <clears throat> and we gotta think about the flavors already. We've got the slaw, it's not sweet. It has a touch of sweetness just to balance out the acidity from the vinegar. Um, I have the pineapple salsa, which is a tiny bit sweet. Should I keep this spicy or should I add coconut flakes? I normally do coconut flakes when I do my shrimp tacos, but I don't normally pair it with a pineapple salsa. So I'm gonna hear the, your little chef brains tell me, like reason with me, if I should put in the, the coconut flakes or not. This is spicy, I gotta sneeze now. Man, I'm doing, I'm crying, I'm sneezing. Whew. Okay, I see spicy on Instagram. Spicy, spicy, spicy. Somebody says coconut, no coconut. Oh, everybody just says spicy. I'm here for that. I'm thinking just spicy too, because if, if we have too much sugar, too much sweetness going on, we're not gonna have that balance. I, somebody says coconut live wild. I see a lot of no coconut and I think I agree with that. We need some contrasting flavors here. This, the sweetness from the pineapple slaw, this, or excuse me, you sneeze. I think it's over, maybe, I don't know. They usually come in twos, but that one, that one didn't. It's the Tonys. This, this has got to go. We're, we're saying goodbye to the pineapple, or the, the coconut. Bye coconut, I love you, but not today. Okay, so we have our shrimp. Thank you, oh my gosh, you guys said bless you. You guys are sweet. Okay, I'm gonna mix up this shrimpies. Bye coconut. <laughs> All right, I wanna make sure these shrimps are well coated with that Tony's, but you gotta be careful because I, I'm wondering if there's a low sodium Tony's because I feel like I want spice. I want more seasoning without the sodium. You know, you know what I mean? That looks good to me. All right, let's fry these puppies up. Let's do it. Whew. Okay. We're starting with olive oil. Oh, let me turn the thing on first. That'd be great, right, Abby? <laughs> Somebody says you, they think there's low sodium ones. Ooh, I gotta check that out. You gotta be careful with Tony's. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm doing the vegetables first because guess what? Shrimp cooks super fast. So veggies are gonna go in first. After this is hot, I'll add in my oil. And this thing gets super, super hot. You wanna know why I can do this, guys? It's because I lost my fingertips working in restaurants for so long. Just burn them straight off. I think it's when I was working at Bonefish, to be honest with you. I would grab things. It was called a Mary Chef. And it was just an oven that got wicked hot in 0.2 seconds. And I just grabbed, just grabbed sheet pans out of that. And now I don't have feelings in my fingers. Wonderful, right? All right, olive oil goes into the pan. I'm not gonna use this many onions. Onions go in. Peppers go in. Ooh, you hear that sizzle, sizzle? That is a good sound right there, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, I looked at my analytics for who's watching these things. 
like 85% women. I don't know why. Oh man, I'll use this, I guess. Oh, there's no salt Tonys. Oh, that's cool. I like that idea. All right, let these guys get all nice and fried up. Give them a little bit of brown color because brown food is flavorful food. What that browning is, it's caramelization. So just if I put, just like if I put sugar in a pan on the stove and let it cook and caramelize, the browning is just, it's called caramelization. And there's sugars, natural sugars in food. And when they heat up to a certain temperature, they will turn that amber color and you'll get caramelization. And then the Maillard re reaction is with proteins. And it's kind of like, kind of the same thing. The proteins hit a certain temperature and they'll start to caramelize. Like when you sear a steak. All right, veggies. I don't want to do my veggies too much. I like a little crispy vegetable action going on. Cody, Cody's, I think is, I, <laughs> Cody says I don't mind being the only guy. Cody, what's up, man? All right, I'm seasoning up my bell peppers and onions with a little bit of Tony's, a little bit of Tony's. Spicy. Why'd I do so spicy? All right, shrimps are in. Oh man, it smells good. Mm hmm, mm hmm. All right, so I kind of just pushed my bell peppers to the side, let my shrimps do their thing. And let me tell you what I did with my corn tortillas. So I just started getting into like Latin American cuisine. This is not Latin American, but I'm talking about the corn tortillas. Um, I've been just steaming these because I'm like, why the heck are they breaking on me? So my specialty is Asian food. So I don't work much with um, Latin American flavors or ingredients. So. I started steaming these. I just wrap them in a wet paper towel and put them in the microwave for like 30 seconds and they steam a little bit and now they don't break. Ah! The things you'll learn on TikTok, right? Am I going back on the yacht? Thanks for asking that question. It looks as so. I got a call from Captain Mark a couple weeks ago. He said, Abby, don't plan anything for the summer. I said, all right, Captain. Aye, aye. I, uh, it's a blast. The crew's like amazing. So it's, it's really fun going out there. It's hard being away for a couple months, but sometimes, or, you know, this last time they gave me a break half, half, hit, ooh, 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 halfway through. It was so great to be able to like go back home and see my people and then um, go back on. Super great family to work for. They're amazing. Don't fight the sharks. I'm not planning on it. Not planning on it. Mm -mm. All right, my shrimpies are almost done. They don't take long at all. Maybe like 30 more seconds to a minute. This is looking gorgita. And the, man, I got turkey on my jacket yesterday. Now I need to wash it again because I just got shrimp juice on it. At least it smells really good.
All right, that is done. Let's plate it up. I'm so excited. I'm going to plate a singular taco for you. Fry them in a pan with some oil. Yeah, I know, I wish I could, but I'm trying to like watch, watch my little health, you know? So if I, if I could fry it in oil, I would. I mean, I could, but I like, it's very tempting. <laughs> All right, got a little bit of everything on there, but I want an orange bell pepper. I'm trying to make this, I'm trying to make the prettiest taco to present to you. And you gotta make sure you're not overstuffing. That is rule number uno. All right, little pineapple slaw. Look at that, it's so pretty. I think I'm gonna put the pineapple slaw on last. Air frying tortillas, the corn ones. Guys, are you kidding me? That looks ridiculously good. I think I might have overstuffed, y'all. Look at these colors. Aren't they brilliant? Look at this. You kidding me right now? That is a taco and a half right there. Dang! Now we're going in for a taste test. It's always strange to me to eat on camera. Okay, here we go. They look so good. I kind of want a little bit of hot sauce. You guys are right. If I put the coconut, it would have been too sweet. Wow, that's killer. That is killer. That might have to be one of our cooking classes. That might have to be one of our cooking classes because that's bomb. All right, thanks for tuning in guys. Remember, subscribe to Abby and the Galley on Facebook and Instagram. If you're on Facebook, there should be a little subscribe button. It's like this green button that says subscribe. Subscribe to my uh, to my channel, Abby in the Galley. If you're on Instagram, go to the top of my page and hit subscribe. If you're on YouTube, go to the top of my page and hit join. For two dollars and ninety nine cents, we can do this once a month, and I will give you the recipe about a week before the cooking class, and we can cook together. And it's so much more fun cooking together. Um, so if you're interested. Make sure to subscribe or join to Abby in the Galley on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And I can't wait to have you guys there. Thank you guys so much for your support. You all have been absolutely amazing. This has been an amazing past two years, and I really, really appreciate everything. All right, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Go eat some good food. Bye.